I don't know, Daniel Jacobs, B-level, A-level fighter, B-level fighter, maybe a C-level fighter. I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Uh, you know, look, he's had a couple of big, big opportunities and uh, he fell short. Right. I mean, you know, the, the latest opportunity being Gennady Golovkin. Right. Your claim to fame. What's your claim to fame? I went 12 rounds with Gennady Golovkin. You know, I lost in a in a in a good way. Right. Now, there are, are media outlets out there, YouTube channels, very few you know, reporters, because when you get into the dot coms, the online reporting, they're a little bit more realistic and unbiased. And, uh, you know, they're not like these uh, fanboys on YouTube. But when you get into the real reporting, most people had Gennady Golovkin winning the fight. Even people recanted or came back and changed their uh, original decision, which, you know, a lot of reporters uh, right after immediately after said, well, you know, maybe, maybe Daniel Jacobs did win. I was there at the fight. And, uh, you know, people claim that when they were at the media at the fight, they didn't have a good vantage point. They're watching the fight and they're like, oh, well, you know, I couldn't see. So but now that I've gone back and watched it closely, HD, HBO TV, whatever, I had Gennady Golovkin winning. OK, so that's my question today. And we're going to talk about the the, the Jacobs, the Louis Aries fight. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You know, there's really no need to watch, but I'll go ahead and tell you. Uh, and, and tomorrow, <clears throat> I might go. I thought about maybe I'll go live during the fight, but I don't know if that would be like a copyright issue. If uh, you know, if you can hear it while I'm talking, I don't know. I gotta, you know, it's dang. You got to be careful with that on YouTube. But um, but yeah, you know, look, like I said, he Daniel Jacobs. I mean, I like him as 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 a person. I really do. But right now, what do we have? You know, we got a guy that I consider a world class B level fighter. Sorry, that, that he is a he, he's. <sighs> I would say Adrian Broner. He's like an Adrian Broner, but I think he's a little bit better than Adrian Broner, you know, fundamentally or whatever. But to me, he's a B-level fighter with 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 flashes of an A-level fighter, you know, with an elite world world class A-level fighter. You know, uh, I don't like in the Gennady Golovkin how he passed up on the IBF and came in heavy. OK, uh, you know, to me that I look at that as a form of cheating. So, you know, to me, that's just that's just how I see it now. Right now, he's backed by HBO signing a deal with HBO and uh, Eddie Hearns, you know, now his new promoter, Eddie Hearns. So he's bad. Look, it doesn't really get any bigger than that in boxing. OK, so um, <clears throat> what are they doing? You know, I was thinking about it earlier. I'm like, what's going on? You know, why, why would they sign Daniel Jacobs, you know, to HBO and Eddie Hearns and all that? Well, they're, they're, I think they're trying to, they're trying to capture a little bit of the middleweight division because, you know, you got, you know, Billy Joe Saunders with the WBO and Lemieux fighting, which anything can happen there. I, I really favor Billy Joe Saunders in that fight. Um, but, but I'm, I think they're just trying to position Daniel Jacobs as to get, well, I'll say to get a rematch with Gennady Golovkin or Canelo, because all these networks and all these promoters, what do they do? They chase the big fight. So that's what they're trying to do. Okay. Now this dude here, Arius, uh, let's get to his record real quick. You know, I was looking at it right now, you know, Daniel J, but, but check it out, you know, Mag Magnum, 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 Magnum Dov, what the hell ever. Uh, 2017 <clears throat> right here, TKO, you know, coming off a, a pretty good win, you know, uni unanimous decision here, a guy with 10 losses, uh, TKO, a guy with eight losses, you know, Sylvia TKO, unanimous decision with a guy 11 and one, you know, about a year, what, a year and a half ago. So you look at this record and, and not to mention that he's a lot smaller, you know, when they're up against each other here, let's get to a, let me see if I can get to a picture here, you know, when they're side by side, you can tell you know, he's a lot. I mean, he looks like a light middleweight to me. So I'm like, what is going on here? You got you got Eddie Hearns in the middle. You got Lewis over here. And then you got Daniel Jacobs. Right. I'm like, hmm. All right. To me, HBO, new promoter. They're trying to position Jacobs to get another another title shot. That's what they're doing. I guarantee you. And they want this to be a showcase fight, right? They want it. They, they, they want this to be his shining moment, his crowning moment, HBO, you know, another Peter Quillen moment, you know, maybe even a first round knockout, right? You know, uh, who knows, right? But although I would, I would you know, I wish Quillen, uh, I'd, I'd like to see a rematch with Peter Quillen and Jacobs. You know, I think he, he caught him cold. It was just a, like a flash knockdown, knockout type thing. And uh, the referee stopped it, whatever. But 
Uh, I, I wish they would have had a rematch, you know, but that's that's me personally. I like Peter Quillen, you know, both of them, you know, very respectful to, to each other back then. I don't know if you guys remember, but, you know, they're they're really cool with each other. Actually, they're friends out of the ring. Now, Lewis Area is telling them, don't run. You know, he's telling Jacobs, you know, don't run. Uh, you know, and Jacobs is like, look, I'll do whatever the hell I want. You know, I'm the A side. I'm the champion. I'm Mr. HBO. I'm Mr. Eddie Hearn. Look, me and Eddie were cool, you know, and then in the meantime, you you got this dude in the crowd to the left of Jacobs, like talking trash to Jacobs. And Jacobs is like, you know, look, dude, uh, you know, I'll do the fighting in the ring. And I believe it was a friend of Lewis, if, if, if I caught it right. I think a friend of Lewis was like, you know, taunting Jacobs, like talking major shit to him, you know. And uh, he said, he's like, you know, I'm from the Bronx or I'm from New York or what the hell, you know, the other guy. was. So there, there was that. That was, to me, more exciting than the actual face off. You know, the <laughs> the dude in the audience arguing with Jacobs, which the audience, there was like 100 people there uh, at this particular event right here. So but anyway, getting back on track. Um, you know, another thing I thought about, too, the WBC. OK, right now we have OK, think about this. Gennady Golovkin, he was the mandatory for two years before he became the WBC champion. Now, what I'm getting at is the belts, number one, which I think Jacobs is chasing and the Charlo fight. Charlo being the mandatory for Gennady Golovkin. So, you know, I want to see it right. And, and, and truthfully, in another year, maybe maybe even less, I, one more fight, I would probably favor Charlo against Gennady Golovkin and Canelo. I got a lot of faith in Charlo. I really do. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> people complaining that, look, you know, uh, he's the mandatory this, that, and the other. Like I said, go back and look at your history. Gennady Golovkin was the mandatory for two years. Remember, Gennady Golovkin won the, the, the interim belt from uh, Rubio, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Rubio. Uh, then you had Miguel Cotto and Canelo in November 2015, right? I think I, I don't have any notes in front of me. November 2015, Miguel, or um, what's his name? Miguel Cotto paid Gennady Golovkin step aside money. Then Canelo became the WBC champion. And what does he do? Now, if you're a Canelo fan, this is going to hurt. It's going to hurt. It's going to what, what does he do? He fights Amir Khan. What? What? He vacates the belt and fights Amir Khan, right? You know, so really back, I think that's what kicked off this whole mess in the middleweight division, especially with the WBC, because like I said, go back, you know, Gennady Golovkin won the interim from Rubio, okay? Uh, then, then uh, and, and at that point, he was paid step aside money, and then we're, we're going to get this big Canelo Golovkin clash. Canelo vacates, Golovkin becomes the champion, right? He's elevated, or whatever they call it. Uh, you know, I guess elevated to the new WBC champion by default, by vacate, you know, because Canelo vacated, whatever. So. But remember that to the Charlo fans out there that are crying that Gennady Golovkin needs to fight Charlo. Gennady Golovkin waited a long time. In fact, he waited most of his career to even, to, well, thank God he, he teamed up with uh, K2 Promotions and they put him in a position to be a world champion, to be a three belt holder like he is now. So, you know, my point is you got you to gotta, you gotta pay your dues in boxing. And, and what I think Jacobs is doing, he's kind of doing a little bit of, a, of what a, an Amir Khan does. You know, he's trying to kind of talk his way into a fight but now he's got these big deep pockets right he's got hbo he's got eddie hearns i mean and i see it coming i already see it coming i already know what's going to happen you know he's going to look good tomorrow night and he's probably right after the fight he's going to call out they're going to say well what's next daniel well, what do you want to do next he'd say well you know i want that golovkin rematch or i want the winner of golovkin canelo or you know i want a shot at this or a shot at that you know he, he he's going to either try to become a mandatory or just whatever put him Himself in a position to get a world title you know maybe go after like I said earlier uh, Billy Joe Saunders because I believe he will beat David Lemieux probably by decision because we know David Lemieux's got a good chin but he took a lot of punishment from Gennady Golovkin you know but they, look Billy Joe Saunders he needs to he needs to just just do something he needs to do something right I mean to me look I mean since the the Eubanks fight what has he done like what has he done he gained a bunch of weight lost weight you know looked terrible in one fight admitted he looked terrible you know when when the talks were going with Gennady Golovkin and uh, and Billy Joe Saunders, he looked terrible. Then he came back and he looked good. And now here we are. You got Billy Joe Saunders and David Lemieux. So what's he going to do? Is he going to look good? Is he going to be a good competitive fight? Whatever he's going to win, he's going to maintain. You know, he's going to maintain the WBO. Call out Jay. You know, I don't know. 
it, it, it really right now, you know, sad, sad, but true. The, the, the real, the, the key is held by Canelo, right? It all depends. And he, he's not even a belt holder. You know, I was thinking about that earlier. I'm like, right now, Canelo is kind of controlling the middleweight division and he doesn't even have a belt. Now, what does that tell you for politics and power? What does that tell you for, for the boxing favoritism and the politics and, and, you know, and the shady bit, I mean, you have a non belt holder that, that kind of has more power than, than a guy holding the w or the the, the wa wc and the ibf at th- three belts right gennady golovkin so to me it all depends on what canelo does but what i think december tom loffler said look if we don't have a decision from canelo camp canelo by december we're going to move on you know why don't they just like like kind of like blacklist canelo just you know, really, if I if I was Tom Loeffler, I would call up all these promoters, right? Eddie Hearns, all of them. And I say, look, you know, Frank Warren, Eddie Hearns. I say, look, you know, let's just let's just, you know, act like Canelo doesn't exist. Right. You know, if he's not going to take it serious, he's going to snub the WBC, you know, turn his nose up like a diva. Right. You know, then you know, let's treat him like that, right? That's what they should do. What's he going to do? He's too big to drop back down to light middleweight. So, you know, I think people need to start treating Canelo like he deserves to be treated. You know, he is not a belt holder. He's not a champion. He never was. He beat an old ass Miguel Cotto. You know, why would he even fight Miguel Cotto and put himself in a position to fight Gennady Golovkin if he was just going to vacate? Right. And I don't mean to get off on, on Golovkin uh, Canelo, but it all ties together with, with Jacobs, the, the fight tomorrow with uh, Billy Joe Saunders. It all ties together. So what do you guys think? I mean, right now, look, I'm going to make a prediction, uh, you know, an official prediction, probably tomorrow. It's like, I don't know, two o'clock in the morning here. I need to go to bed, but uh, I'll probably make my official prediction tomorrow. But I'll tell you right now, I got Daniel Jacobs winning, you know, possibly by a TKO. I mean, I think Lewis, look, Lewis has got a ton of heart and, uh, you know, he's a fighter. He is. But, you know, it's, look, this is a showcase fight. And unless something happened, I mean, look, right now, Jacobs looks incredible. You know, I, then, then unless something, you know, like I said, major happens, like he gets lucky, lands a lucky punch, something like that. J- this is a guaranteed win for Daniel Jacobs. And I can already hear the other YouTube channels. You watch, you watch. The next week, it's going to be Daniel Jacobs, you know, versus Golovkin. You know, Jacobs versus Canelo. You're going to see this is going to get his name back into that top five conversation.